Hi, everybody. Happy Monday and happy Halloween from the Tech Sideline family. I'm Giovanni Heater, joined alongside Jack Briz and Dine today. He makes his TSL Today debut. Speaking of TSL Today, it's a Halloween. It's a Monday. We're going to get things going right now. Live on Monday, October 31st, we come to you this afternoon from the Corporate Research Center in Blacksburg, Virginia. Again, I'm Giovanni Heater, joined alongside Jack Brizendine. And, well, Jack, there's not a lot of news and updates to go over. We talked pretty much at nauseum about Virginia Tech football's loss on Thursday night in Raleigh to the NC State Wolfpack. So we figured, why not take this opportunity to talk Virginia Tech wrestling? Jack comes at us. He is our pretty much our executive, our, our uh, feature writer on Virginia Tech wrestling knows everything about the Hokies on the mat Jack I know there's an inner squad scrimmage this past weekend you were in attendance what did you see that really stood out to you from this inner squad scrimmage yeah I think a lot of the young guys really stood out um you look at guys like Tom Crook and Caleb Henson uh both had really really good matches really good performances for two freshmen uh Tom Crook took down Colin Girardi who's a fifth year senior so really impressive win from him as a true freshman and Caleb Henson looked really good uh had a major decision win over Kyle Montgomery, who's another upperclassman. So a lot to like from these younger guys. Uh, got to see a couple guys that are fan favorites. Obviously, Bryce Andonian, uh, Sam Latona, they showed what you would expect. Had pretty good matches. Uh, Hunter Bowen looked great. Uh, Hunter Katko looked really good. Got the only pin of the uh, scrimmage over Alex Rosenbaum in only 34 seconds. So uh, all the rave reviews you've heard about Katka in the offseason proved to have been warranted. Uh, but yeah, well, it was a pretty encouraging scrimmage, and it showed just how competitive a lot of these guys are. Now, for those that uh, may be wondering, Makai Lewis did not wrestle uh, in the inter-squad scrimmage. Jack, what do you think the reason behind that truly is? I don't really want to speculate on it. I think it's probably just because there's no need. I think everyone can kind of understand what they're getting with Makai. Uh, he's had injury issues in the past, so there's not really any need to throw him out there in a scrimmage. Yeah. I think everyone who's watched Makai wrestle before and knows who he is as a wrestler knows he'll be prepared for the year. All right, well, Virginia Tech comes into this 2022-2023 uh, campaign, ranks 15th in the country, um, a situation where last year they had a pretty good season and were just so close to pulling off some big wins, close loss to Ohio State and Blacksburg, uh, a lot of opportunities ahead for the Hokies in 2022. So when you take a look at this schedule, I mean, it is loaded. you got to go on the road in Columbus to play Ohio State after the Southeast Open. That's on uh, Friday, November 11th. Uh, and then you got to play Missouri, who's in the top 25. Cornell ranks sixth in the country. That's going to be the match at the Moss Art Center. NC State, I mean, the ACC is loaded. NC State, you got to wrestle against North Carolina, Pittsburgh. Virginia is pretty decent. It does, definitely does not get easy for Virginia Tech uh, in this season's campaign. No, and I think that that's by design. You know, I talked to head coach Tony Roby about the difficulty of the schedule, and he kind of talked about how these matches are important because these are some of the best wrestlers in the country, and those are the kind of guys you're going to face down the line um, when you're wrestling in the NCAA tournament and you're competing for national titles. So uh, it was kind of a strategy, I guess, to bring these tough matches on the schedule. And also a lot of these matches are at home. If you look at Missouri, you look at Cornell and Moss, you've got um, another one, uh, NC state at home. I mean, these are good high quality matches. And that was another thing uh, to sort of reward the fan base because these are high quality wrestling matches. I mean, these are some of the featured matches of the year. Um, I think in my opinion, all right, so when you go through the weight classes here in the different rankings, uh, in at 174 is Makai Lewis right behind uh, Carter Starosi, who took him down in the uh, national championship just a year ago. So Makai ranks second in the country in the 174 weight class. Uh, and then you, when, you, when you drop down to a couple different weight classes, there's also some Hokies who find themselves uh, not only in the top 25, but as high as number six in the country. Yeah, and that's what you're going to expect with Virginia Tech. I mean, with Makai being behind Sirachi, I mean, we all kind of saw how close those guys are. Sirachi beat him out in overtime, so it wasn't yeah. like he's that much better than Makai. Um, so the, the rankings are kind of arbitrary. It is kind of nice to see guys, um, especially guys moving up to new weight classes in pretty pretty high rankings. Um, you got Bryson Donian, who's moving up to 157 this year. He's ranked number six at 157, which is pretty impressive. And then you've got... A guy like Sam Latona went up from 125 to 133, and he's currently sitting at 13 at 133. So, you know, there's a lot of talent in this room, and I don't earn that team. And I don't think that, you know, guys moving up has really changed that. I think um, these rankings sort of reflect the idea 
that I think a lot of people in the wrestling world have is that Virginia Tech's got a very deep lineup that's loaded with a lot of young stars. You look at this schedule, where do you think the toughest match uh, for Virginia Tech is? Is that is it that early match against Ohio State, or does it wait until Cornell or even into ACC play? You know, I think there's going to be a lot of eyes on that Ohio State match just because of the way uh, last year's Ohio State match ended. Uh, Nathan Traxler, a heavyweight who's now gone, a coming on to graduate, uh, wasn't able to win his final match, and that's ended up being the, uh, the deciding factor in that match in Virginia Tech loss. So I think a lot of people will be looking at that. Ohio State's currently ranked four, so that's a – Big trip to uh, Columbus for for the Hokies. Um, but I would say Cornell will be another big one. Cornell is a historically good wrestling school, so that one in Moss, that'll be a big match. But I think the one that everyone's thinking about is NC State. Um, I know there has been a lot of controversy with that rivalry over the last year or two. Um, so I think people will be excited to see that. And I think Virginia Tech, as of right now, might have a sh- little bit of a stronger roster than NC State, which I don't know that you could say that in years past. So that'll be a big match for them. And it's it's basically going to be for the ACC, so as it is every year. So that'll be a big one to watch. If you had to pick a victor in the ACC right now, out of probably you know Pitts in that conversation, obviously NC State, obviously Virginia Tech, UNC is there, Virginia. Uh, you can't sleep on the Cavaliers. Who you got coming out of the top of the Atlantic Coast Conference? I really do think it's Virginia Tech. I think um, with NC State. I think it's almost been like a pendulum the last couple of years between Virginia Tech and NC State as far as who's on top in the ACC. And based on that way of thinking, Virginia Tech would be next. Um, but I also think that, you know, this roster is good. And I think there's a lot of people that don't know. Or there's a lot of players on this roster or wrestlers that people just haven't seen yet. Um, and I think Saturday's scrimmage gave them the first taste of some of these young guys. And I don't think that nationally people understand just how good these guys are like We'll have Caleb Henson wrestling at 149. And I don't think people will really understand how good he is, uh, but I think Saturday proved sort of how good these young guys are. You got Eddie Ventresca and and um, Cooper Flynn at 125. Like These are guys that will be able to compete with some of these high-caliber ACC wrestlers, and people might just not know it yet, which is why I think Virginia Tech might be ranked a little bit lower than a uh, school like NC State, but I think if I had to pick right now, I think they'd come out on top. And in your eyes, is Virginia Tech a true national championship contender? And I'll kind of double-edged sword that. If they're not a team national championship contender, is there a guy or maybe even two on this roster that certainly can win an individual title? Yeah, I think obviously you got to go with Makai. Yep. Uh, came up just short last year. Uh, wasn't I mean, it was pretty much neck and neck till at the end. So Makai's always one to watch. I think he'll um, he'll be even more focused this year. So he's. He's definitely someone that could be in that conversation. I think another dark horse candidate could be Bryce Andonian. Uh, you know, Andonian finished third at last year's NCAA tournament at 149. Like I mentioned before, is moving up to 157. Uh, so if there's always some sort of mystery when you're moving up weight classes, but I have confidence he'll probably continue his his dominance up there. Um, but as far as team, you know, Penn State's got a really good team, and it's kind of everyone against them at this point. Right. And there isn't really much drop-off between last year's team for Penn State and this year. So it's going to be tough, but I think Virginia Tech will be uh, at least within the top five as really? far as teams. Yeah, I think there's reason to believe that that's, that's a realistic expectation for Tony Irby's squad this year. Let's flip the script and uh, talk a little bit of uh, Virginia Tech wrestling recruiting. Uh, just picked up a huge commit in Jimmy Mullen. He's the uh, number eight overall uh, recruit in his class. He's also the number one overall heavyweight in his class, and he's also going to play a little bit of Virginia Tech uh, defensive end on the football side of things as well. Uh, what have you seen out of Jimmy Mullen and, and the rest of this recruiting class as far as Virginia Tech trying to reload? You know, this is Makai Lewis's last year, right? Mm-hmm. So so there's some spots that you have to fill. Yeah, I think with Jimmy Mullen, he kind of encapsulates just how how well Tony Roby's staff's been able to recruit. I mean, he's the number one heavyweight in America for the class of 2023. In addition to him for the class of 2023, you've got Mac Church, who's the second uh, overall at 138. You've got Hunter Mason, who's number four overall at 138. You've got Logan Frazier, who's the number best 128-pound wrestler in Indiana for that class. I think just overall, uh, I think people have started to take notice of Virginia Tech's recent success in wrestling, or not recent, but just sort of the the constant uh, increase in success for Virginia Tech wrestling. And I think it's been reflected in recruiting. I think I don't think you get these guys if they don't believe that this is a program that can develop them and really turn them into that All-American potential national champion status. And, you know, I think Virginia Tech's at a point where I don't want to say that being the best in your state isn't good enough, but I think uh, the Hokies kind of look at and see, they're in a point now where you can kind of look and see who are the top guys at each position nationally. 
and you've got a chance to go get those guys, which I think is a reflection of just how much the program's grown. And I think you see it with guys like Jimmy Mullen committing. No doubt about it. All right, well, that's going to wrap up our Virginia Tech Wrestling 2022-2023 preview. Jack, again, is our insider for Virginia Tech Wrestling, so he'll certainly be covering the Hokies all the way through in uh, their 2022-2023 campaign. He'll be on the road. He'll go to uh, the ACC tournament, everything like that. So plenty of good articles coming out on Virginia Tech Wrestling right here at Tech Sideline for Jack Brizendine. Uh, next up, we're going to have David Cunningham on. we got a little bit of a treat for you this Halloween, and we're going to talk some Virginia Tech basketball. Virginia Tech Wrestling opens things up with the Southeast Open on Saturday, November 5th to start out their season in Salem. After that, they go on the road to face Ohio State in Columbus. We'll be back. It's TSL Today on a Halloween Monday from Blacksburg.